Okay. Good, okay. good morning, good morning, and welcome to New Thought Unity. Yes, it is autumn. We've had autumn leaves shared with you not only by our band, but by our extra special, special guest, my friend Josh Strange, who I like to say thank you. And if this is a sign of what your talent is like, that Grammy-nominated Josh Strange introduction will become Grammy winner Josh Strange. Amen. So we've got the A-team here. For those in Facebook, let others know you want to be with us today. And Alice and Althea will let you know what's happening here. So for any additional details on these announcements, you can see the uh, website, the email blast, or Facebook um, for all the details. Um, first of all, Angel Wing Resale Shop has new merchandise arriving daily, and the fall merchandise is out, and also the Halloween decor. So stop by Sunday, 12 to 3. Gallery of Grace Gift Shop will be open today. You go out the door, down the ramp, and it's the first door on your left. So stop in after service. A Course in Miracles book study group will have no class uh, this week on 1011. Um, the next class will be Tuesday, October 18th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, in person at uh, NTUC, facilitated by Susan Bartels, and a $5 love offering is suggested. Women of Wisdom, Saturday, October the 15th from 10 a.m. to noon. And our guest speak speaker is David McClanahan, who will talk about spirit and so, awakening to the divine. All genders are welcome. A $10 love offering is suggested. And make sure you use the Zoom link to uh, pre-register for this gathering. Trunk or Treat is coming up. NTUC Spooktacular Halloween event. Um, that will be Saturday uh, the 29th from 1 to 5 at Bush Recreation Center. Sign up to be a trunker, contact Jack Norris, or call the center. Crossport. Crossport meets the second and fourth Mondays of the month at 7.30 in person and via Zoom. Contact Lauren Watson if you have any questions or call the center for more information. Mastermind. Awaken the Mastermind Consciousness, facilitated by Alice Frazier. It's Wednesday, November the 2nd at 6.30 in Friendship Hall. Check the email blast, Facebook, website, or contact the center. Karaoke by our own Kim will be Friday, November the 4th at 7 p.m. in Friendship Hall. Join karaoke for a special evening of songs. Bring your own snacks and drinks and voice. La, 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 la. And don't forget to put a little something in the tip jar for DJ Kim. And a very important reminder. The NTUC State of Affairs and Potluck is immediately following the service in Friendship Hall. So even if you didn't bring something, come down and be here for that important meeting. We've got a lot of information to share with you. Thank you, Thank you Althea. And I'm going to say good morning again. Welcome to this fabulous Sunday that we've got to share with you how to celebrate our soul's journey. And for the affirmation that we have, I'd like to say to you, join me in reciting and sharing and saying with me, I appreciate and celebrate my soul's journey as I open my arms and heart to new places, spaces, and faces. We're going to say that one more time because we mean it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> So together, I appreciate and celebrate my soul's journey as I open my arms and heart to new places, spaces, and faces. And so we're going to take a moment to go into prayer. And Father, Mother, God, as we have just affirmed, we are opening our arms, we are opening our hearts, and we are opening our minds to embrace new spaces, new places, and new faces that we can enjoy as we continue our soul's journey. And today, 
we know that the service that we are participating in, be it in person or virtually, is one that will allow us to elevate and live our soul's purpose. And so it is. Amen. Please stand and join us to sing, I Hold the Power and the Dream. Shake our hug. after the service down in Friendship Hall. So please say with me our mission and vision statements. Our mission statement is, 
In God, we, we are, are an, an inclusive, inclusive, abundant community, community experiencing, experiencing love, transforming, transforming lives, and serving, and serving others. others. And our vision statement is, we celebrate, we celebrate a world of harmony and, and oneness, a place, a place of, of loving, loving stewardship, sacred connections, and pure, and pure joy, joy, where all, all are, are welcomed, welcomed with, with honor and, and respect. respect. What we want you to know more than anything is that whoever you are, regardless of race, gender, nationality, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, or neurodiversity, this is an inclusive community that celebrates diversity. We are living our mission. All are welcome with honor and respect. And we will embrace all walks of life in spirit. So wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you're welcome here. If it's your first time here, in the back we have a newcomer's table that has information packets about the center. And uh, there's a gift with that information packet. Regina will be there after the service and she can answer any questions that you may have, even if this is not your first time here. So... Again, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And now we're going to settle in for meditation. to take a deep breath and hold it and release. Take another deep breath and hold and say ah. We're going to take one more deep, gentle, cleansing breath. Inhale. Hold and say ah. And I want you to think, I am only love. And we 
repeat, I am only love silently to yourself. Close your eyes, turn your attention inside, and encounter the love that is present within you, for love is all around in this moment. Free your mind, free yourself, and feel the love. Take a moment, say again, I am love and I am present with love. And as you come back, know that in this time and space, yes, there is only love. The journey that you took into love is the journey that you will, journey of love that you will bring back out and bring with you every step you take this week.
a sentimental journey Gonna set my heart at ease Gonna make a sentimental journey To renew old memories Got my bag, got my reservation Spent each dime I could afford Like a child in wild anticipation I long to hear that all aboard Seven, that's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting up for heaven Counting every mile of railroad track That takes me back Never thought my heart could be so young why did I decide to roam? I gotta make this sentimental journey, sentimental journey home. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Josh. I had to go back and look that up again. So for those of you from Cincinnati, you're thinking, oh, that's a Cincinnati homegirl song, thanks to Doris Day. But it's our song now, thanks to Alice Ryan. <laughs> so I was sitting here. As you know, the title today is Celebrating Our Soul's Journey. Some of you have seen my shirt. It's based and inspired upon a conference I just attended two and a half months ago. If I could really count, you would say, no, Alice, two months ago. August to September is one month. September to October is just the second month. So just 60 days ago, I was creating a new journey for myself, but I did it with a few others. Althea Palmer was there. But I want to remind you, so if you're not thinking we're doing the 40s version of S Sentimental Journey, no, we're going to do a 21st century version. I'm just going to leap through about 50 years of history for you real quick. Sentimental is about the feelings you get. The journey is about the road you took to get somewhere. So by the end of today, in the next 20 or so minutes, you're going to have some feelings, and you're going to want to go do something. This is not about sit here and be talked at and go, oh, yeah, yeah, that felt good. Uh-huh, I got it. Mm-mm, mm-mm, Alice is here today. I don't, I don't roll that way. Now, I've got to let you know, some of the slides didn't make it. I had some feelings about that, but I've got some better feelings about it. It means I can't be glued to the podium, and I've got to get out here and bring it alive for you a bit. It also means that celebrating our soul was a first time ever experience in 
the new thought alliance of faiths and churches. It was the people of African descent got together across all faiths and said, we all have common beliefs, we do it a little differently, but it all started from the same base, and that's a base that unites us. So, they took two years to plan how to come together and bring new thought and unity together at the Unity Village. Now, for those at New Thought Unity Center says, could say, that kind of sounds like our journey of how we've come together from different faith traditions to become one. And we discovered two months ago not only the power of coming together, but the shared vision and possibility and the power of being one. And in that power of being one, we further expressed ourselves, and that's why I chose the affirmation. We weren't getting into what our thoughts were, but we were opening up our arms and our hearts to one another in newfound ways. And as a result, we've got new friends, new connections, and new ways of being so that there's a new life force and energy that's coming forth. And I like to say in that work that you all are going to do today, that as a community, it's not what the board says, but it's about what you do. As we were talking earlier in some of the songs, it's about the dream you have. Now, when, new th when Unity, which is where we started this whole conference, and the journey of embracing people of color, and back then, there was another term used, but to embrace the people of African descent, they could study at Unity Village when they were in the Unity community, but they could not stay on the grounds of Unity. And one day, something happened, and some of you know when jo Johnny Coleman came into this church, like, how could you ever, ever think of telling her no? but she was not allowed on the grounds to sleep. Lee Summit was what's called a sundown town, and that means that if you're a person of color, you need to make sure you were no longer on the streets when the sun went down. Well, the powers that be needed her to stay a little longer and attend another class session that had gotten delayed, and she had to say, that's not gonna work, so she left to go back 15 miles into Kansas City to where she stayed. Well, when she came back the next day, some powers that meet, some powers that be that were at the top said, I'm sorry, you will no longer be able to be part of this program. Well, what happened is her fellow students in the community said, and got together later that day and said, well, if she goes, we go. There was a defining moment for leadership to understand and say, do you let some rule or some way of being stop not just one person, but a whole community to move forward and move ahead? That was the day, that was one moment when change happened. Johnny wound up being able to stay on the grounds at Unity Village, continue her studies, become the head of Unity Worldwide Ministries about seven years later after she got her training, and go on and lead a whole new development of New Thought teachings under the Universal Foundation by her, one of the biggest congregation communities that is now worldwide because of the community coming together, standing as one, and allowing not only the journey of one, but the journey of all to continue and go forth and find new ways. So that's what a few people did to change a space. So I want to get to what happens to when we awaken our souls by enjoying and celebrating others in new spaces, new places, and see the Spirit of God in their faces. So, I told you what happened to transform a space so that 60 years later, everyone of African descent within the New Thought communities came together 
and congregated at Unity Village in 2022. What we found out was that was the largest gathering of people since the pandemic at Unity Village. We felt everyone who was there, we were on holy ground. For me, it was a homecoming. I had been at Unity Village about 12 years ago with Lauren Watson, Reverend Doris Hoskins, and a few others. I'm seeing if there's any of the fellow board members with me at the time there. That was at a pivotal point, not only for our community, but also for Unity worldwide. Well, what happened in 2022 is some of us were back together again. Reverend James Trapp was there. Doris Hoskins was there. What we found was that with our presence of those of African descent, there was a sacred reconnection that was taking place all over. I met James Dillard Freeman's assistant. She is walking with the cane. I met her on Sunday afternoon at Unity Village, and she said, I have been hearing about you all being here at Unity Village, and holy ground has returned. She goes, you could feel the spirit and the presence of generations descending upon Unity Village making a difference. That difference was the beliefs that we held, we may have held them a bit differently, but they came together as one collective, honoring those that had passed through Unity Village, those who looked like me, who had been told at one point, you can't be here. I know the stories of New Thought Unity in the 50s. Someone like me could visit, but don't think about joining the church. We weren't allowed. So for 40 years later, for my family to be present, for mom and dad who are looking, yes, I'm up here sharing a Sunday message, a message of appreciating all, a message of love, a message of oneness, a message of the power of unity. But more importantly, it's not what we get, but how are we bringing in another generation? So it's nice to have a young musician who's far talented than most of us, except for the other two band members he's playing with, to be here to see, here's what it looks like when you keep your arms open, your doors open, your hearts open to allow others to come in. I see some members who've been part of the Four Agreements class who I haven't always seen here, but they're here now, why? Because we're open and we're sharing a message that no matter who you are, where you are, all are welcomed here. All can discover what is theirs to do for their soul's journey. And so I want to share with you, when you awaken your soul in new spaces, you will find that you will have some new experiences, some experiences that will awaken your soul. So think about, you know, we've all talked about having a bucket list. For some people who were with us on this trip, their bucket list goal was to go to Unity Village. And if I, I'll, sh I'll post the picture. There's a picture of my dad getting a new set of wings. He got his angel wings because everyone can take a picture in that space and, and see themselves in a new light. We'd like to think that when Joyce is running around taking pictures of all of us, she's capturing some of you in a new light that you can see how your, sto how your soul has been awakened. So, I said, some of you have a bucket list. Hopefully, if you don't have a bucket list, I'm going to give you a challenge right now. Between now and New Year's, think of one space you'd like to go visit. For some people, it could be a trip to go somewhere. For others, it may be, you know, I've been wanting to go to the Van Gogh exhibit. I'm going to make it there. Identify a space you'd like to enjoy before this year is over, because you'll be able to create an experience where you'll have your own 
sentimental journey about. And it'll be a 2022 version of it, not 1945. So I'm give you a moment to think on a space you'd like to go visit. I promise you, your soul will be happy when you get there. But first, you're going to imagine it. Now, for some of us going out to Unity Village, because we're celebrating our soul's journey, you've gotten the daily word often. You've seen the fountains that have been pictured. That was a special place for so many people to get to and get their picture taken at. And I will be sharing that on the Facebook feed for you all later so you can see. But most recently, after I went to Unity Village, I had a bucket list trip. And some of you know about it. I had a bucket list trip of going to Spain and Greece and Turkey and Italy. And I took 15 days off, and I did it. What I didn't know was that when I got to Turkey, I'll be honest, I thought I was just going to be doing a little shopping and finding some carpets and some rugs and some great artwork. Well, we got a private car, because there was a group of us in. Some of us are good negotiators. And we got a driver for the day. And he took us to Ephesus and the House of the Virgin Mary. But I w and I was not planning, I was hoping to get to Ephesus, but I didn't know, I hadn't done all my research about the house of the Virgin Mary and that there's a prayer wall like the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And I got there. And I lit a few candles for some folks who I know have some health challenges. And I'm happy to say that one person found out that they were going in for a major heart condition when they got in, their heart was fine. No stents, no blockages, no nothing. You're good. And they're like, that prayer for my well-being worked. Another person is in hospice at home with five kids. They're in the midst of making a move, and she goes, I'm going to move because this is where probably my family is going to be and where my husband will have his next great opportunity. She goes, I don't know why I have the strength to do this, but I have enough strength to do one more move and move halfway across country for the family. She goes, I don't know where this came from. For me, that's the sign of the power of prayer. I just wanted the next days ahead to be filled with grace and ease. She goes, I've got grace, I've got ease, and I've got the peace and understanding of knowing I'm going to make it. So I think about New Thought Unity, and there's a bit of a prayer that I had for you all, but I won't share because you all have work to do. <laughs> we have work to do. But this brings me up to the power of a thought. I was just with John Maxwell down in Atlanta on Friday, and he reminded us about, you know, of course, he's the leadership guru, and he was sharing with us that a good leader, you walk into a space with a plan, you do all of that, but you need to make sure you read the room. Check out, see how people are responding, how they're engaging with you. Get a sense of what the feeling is. And he goes, here's why. Because you think you were prepared to do one thing, but you've been called into that moment to do something even bigger. There's a bigger message you're supposed to deliver. He goes, ministers get to do that every Sunday. That's why some of us aren't up here every Sunday, not me. Well, here's what happened to Martin Luther King. Many of you know there was the great March on Washington in 63. Martin had everything prepared, you know, got a few hundred thousands of people showing up, you better know what you're going to say and have everything planned. Well, the night before, a group of them who were going to be up on the stage and talking, you know, you have dinner together, make sure you're going over logistics. 
Martin happened to be talking with Mahalia about a dream he had. And some of you may know this story. So, yeah, so that was, that was the dinner conversation the night before. So they're all up on stage, and Martin Luther King was about to wrap up what his prepared remarks were. But Mah Mahalia, being a good, good, good person reading the room and being like a second lieutenant for another lieutenant for him, because he had a few, said, Martin, tell him about your dream. Martin, tell him about your dream. He had never planned to do the I have a dream speech. But that was the bigger message that needed to be shared. So when we gather and show up at places, although we think we have one purpose, sometimes you have another purpose. And when you're called to speak up and share, share your dreams. Don't just let the leadership tell you what they want to do. Let them know and let them become aware of what's in your heart, what your desires are, and what can happen so that you can move forward. So look, we have a Martin Luther King holiday. Those dreams that he had for his children, those are dreams that are still, it's a work in progress, but it is happening. So think if he had never shared, thanks to Mahalia, I have a dream, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't be where we are today as a nation. So, think about a place where you've been called to be present. And what can you do to enjoy being in that place a bit more? I want you to think about that. How can you be a part of making a world of difference? Yeah, breathe that in. Because we all have a part in making a world of difference. Now, the last thing I want to bring you into is about the faces that you will encounter. So look around. Look behind you. Some of you are next to a face that you kind of see often, so you don't have to look at them again if you don't want to. But if you like them, take a sneak, sneak a peek. Take a look at them. When you can enjoy the faces of others you are around, and then when you notice someone way back there in the corner, or way up front, and something sparks something in you. That's helping make a world of difference. That's enjoying the faces of those around and creating a new sense of connection. When we were in Unity Village in August, so I went up to some folk and said, you don't know me, but would you do your but for you all, 11 a.m. meditation, that's for me at 2 p.m. Or was a noon meditation, it's at 3 p.m. for me. All of Agape folks now know me. Reverend Arlene gave me her number. She goes, so you're Miss Cincinnati. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm here. She saw me during the pandemic chime in. Reverend um, Beckwith um, on their Sunday services. So, yes, yeah, so sometimes I did a two-a-day. They're in California, so after ours, I could catch them later in the afternoon. No problem. I saw Reverend Leon. He and I have a connection. He goes, well, I'm a Buckeye person, too. So I told him, whenever you're swinging through the state, come on down. We'll find some room for him. They ran an amazing youth program out at Unity Village. And he said, anytime I know, if we want to borrow from their playbook, we can. And so when we get it back up, I've got a playbook to share. Because <laughs> there's some programs and projects that they did that were wonderful. And the kids wrote us a song for Sunday service. And for those who would normally attend Unity service on a Sunday out at the village said, our services haven't rocked like this in a long time. It was a good time, and we've got that talent here. I mean, I've seen Josh with his drums for peace through the West End. There are a lot of talented individuals who know how to use the talents and gifts of others to make a difference. So last night, I was at a preview of Blink. 
going to challenge you all. Our city is on a worldwide stage. Our neighborhood has a lot of programming happening on Saturday and Sunday during the day in conjunction with Blink. I met the artist and the, young t the two young individuals who posed for a piece that's down in OTR. And I encourage you, the expressions and how people posed in this one thing just lit up the night. So that we were all were supposed to leave probably at 8.30. At 10 o'clock, conversations were still going on outside. Okay, there was a little wine. But they were still going on outside, no problem. So I want you to think about, you could do a, a, one, a trifecta here. What new space can you go to that may be in a place you've never been to see some new faces and see how you can see the face of God in others and you be the face of God for someone else? So I want you to think about that. Blink, 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 blink. But I'll let you come up with your own place to go. <laughs> You never know who you're going to see. And I believe if you open your arms and your hearts to new spaces, new places, and new faces, you will find yourself in a new kind of alignment with your soul's purpose. So I don't know about you, but are you, are you ready to get on the journey of living your soul's purpose? I am. So with that, please imagine. Imagine what's possible. Imagine how you can make a world of difference. And why? Because we've got some music to be had, some fun to be had, and we will find that we are the ones. We are the ones. You are the one to make a world of difference. Thank you and namaste. Two hearts can find, but 
time in our service where we take our tithes and our offerings in our hands and say our offertory blessing. So if you'll say that with me. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. This is also the time when we introduce our chaplains and they are Lauren Watson and Marilyn, and they're here to pray with you. Take that great big step and join with a chaplain in prayer today. And they're there more than willing, ready, and able to help you on your spiritual journey in that way. Also, if you're giving online, thank you for pushing the button. If you're using the machine in the back, thank you for doing that also. And we have some folks. We have some folks online sending us wishes. Um, Dovey sends a good morning and blessings from Blanchester. Sandra sang, sends a good, glorious morning from Loveland. Marlene is in Louisville, heading to California, and sends All blessings right. from the road. Alexandria sends love from Albany, Kentucky. And please, everyone, send love to Kay, who is feeling under the weather today, as well as Peg. Peg is feeling under the weather today. That's why yeah. she's not with us. We'd like to extend this blessing for all that has been given so that it is received and multiplied, not only for the giver, but for those that are receiving and for the work that we are doing to bless this center. Amen. 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 So please stand and join us in saying our prayer for protection. <laughs> I had you down. I had you down. And together we know we'll form a line outside. <laughs> Let's circle up. Line. Let's circle, circle up. up. Yes. Circle up. <laughs> I think we can do it today. Yeah. If you stretch it out, we can reach all the way around. Spread out. Come on, spread. And together we know the light, the light of God, God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, the presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is, 
and all is well. Love. 